and welcome back to sunny, beautiful Tampa, Florida. The Florida RV Super Show. Steve DeVal from Thor Motor Coach. Excited to be here. I'll tell you, the show is hopping. It's a gorgeous day. And as I'm walking through our displays and talking to people and answering questions, uh, one of the questions that people have been asking me is say, hey, you know what? I, I, I have this Class A right now, and I'm ready to step up into a diesel motorhome. So what should I be looking for? What questions should I, I be asking? What is the difference between a Class A and a diesel? Well, I, I've answered uh, a lot of people in person, but I thought, you know what? Let's get you uh, a live explanation, and we'll take you through uh, a popular, popular diesel here today, the Palazzo 37.4, the newest floor plan in the Palazzo. And we're going to do that with National Sales Manager Adam Gudger, who has been here, you said, 18 years now. This is my 18th floor super show. That's awesome. What do you like about What do you like about this show? I mean, it's probably changed dramatically over the past almost 20 years you've been here. I love the energy. I love the fact that the dealers are just so aggressive. So, folks, if you were hungry for a new motorhome, this is the right place to be. Um, you know, you mentioned... You know, with the Palazzo being popular, um, the Palazzo's less money, Steve, mm -hmm. than some of the gas Class A motorhomes that you can buy. Well, let's talk so, about I that. Mean, so there's so much on a diesel that you get when you spend the money for a diesel. Well, let's go in and let's, let's, let's kind of talk to the uh, folks out there because they've been asking me, so, so what are some of the differences? Well, obviously the big difference is uh, the, the drivetrain and the powertrain. So let's talk about that first. Yeah. So, you know, the one thing I, I really try to educate people on is the fact that if you're going to buy a diesel motor, more than likely mm -hmm. when we're talking to you, we find out you're going to be using it more. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that you know, we encourage you to use it more and more right. and more. And, and people that typically buy a diesel will, will use it more than they ever anticipate. And so um, the first thing is the ride. Okay. So, you know, when you're riding on airbags, so mm -hmm. the difference between a, a gas V10 Ford would be it's going to be leaf spring suspension. Okay. And then when you get into a diesel, it's called an active air ride suspension. So believe it or not, um, these airbags actually adjust as you're traveling down the road. So there's these ride height sensors, there's actually one in the front and okay. two in the back, and they detect axle movement. And so when those axles move, there's a reservoir, an air reservoir, that actually sends air to the bag and adjusts the ride. And so you're essentially riding on air. So uh, first and foremost, mm -hmm. it's, it's just so much better and more comfortable. So when you want to drive a long distance, you know, you can. And you're not going to be like, oh, I'm tired. I want to pull over on the side of the road. So that's huge. Okay. Um, another thing, again, when you're using it more mm -hmm. um, is you're probably going to see all kinds of all different kinds of terrain. So you'll see, you know, the, the real steep mountains mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. Well, the torque you get on a diesel engine mm -hmm. is significantly more. In fact, about 43% because uh, V10 mm -hmm. is going to give you 457 pound-feet. At a minimum, uh, the Palazzo is going to give you either 660 mm -hmm. or 700 pound-feet of torque. And so with that, considering that the weight of the motorhomes is almost exactly the same to a gas mm -hmm. coach, you have a lot more power. And it's, it's so funny because people tell me, oh, Adam, I'm not in a hurry. I'm retired. Right. You know, I just want to take my time. But, and enjoy the ride. Yeah. But if you're driving 25 miles an hour, right. Steve, you know, and you don't get that extra day with the grandchildren yeah. or whatever, or, or just, you know, you got to make a somewhere, you got a time sensitive type of situation, you know, the diesel's really going to do a huge job for you. And, you know, in addition to that, it's quieter because mm -hmm. you remember the engine's in the back. Yeah. So when you're driving, you could actually have a normal conversation without screaming over an engine. Uh, so that's a huge deal. Um, Weight-bearing capacity is another thing. So right here at the, at the entry door, okay, right there, um, yellow we actually sticker. talk about um, this has 5,870 pounds of available payload in it. Gas coaches will typically have about half the payload of a diesel. And so, you know, you don't even, it's not necessarily even if you're a rock collector. I mean, uh -huh. if you're any normal human being and you're going to spend a long time on the road, you're going to have a lot of stuff you're going to bring with you, right? Well, we don't want you to have to sacrifice uh, your comfort level. One of the great things about our RV folks mm -hmm. is the fact that you can have your whole trip packed before you ever even think about going anywhere. I mean, think about that. Yeah. You know how much time I spend just to go anywhere for a week? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So it's already there. You don't have to say, oh, well, I'm not bringing the golf clubs because I'm worried I'm going to overload the oh, motorhome. Oh, not in this. None of that. So let's talk. What, what questions when people are out here, be it here in Tampa or a show near them, mm -hmm. when they are talking to uh, a, a sales guy or a factory rep such as yourself, what are some of the questions they should be asking? What should they really start to get some information and education on so they can make an informed decision? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is if you don't want to buy a diesel, don't drive one because that's going to change your mm -hmm. mind right away. But really, I mean, it's about lifestyle. I mean, what we want to try to do is put people in what fits their okay. lifestyle. And if you're going to spend a lot of time or you're going to travel far distances, I mean, we're instantly going to be thinking, you know what? You may want to consider going diesel pusher because 
because it's really just going to be that much more conducive to what you want to do. And I had a question someone asked about the chassis on uh, this particular uh, model. And uh, one of the things that we do is the Atlas Foundation through Moride. And uh, the technology there and the way they put that together is really uh, leaps and bounds ahead of what everybody else is doing. So kind of walk us through that process because I know you have a, a major input with your position in design and, and, and whatnot on how that all fits not only the Palazzo but how we do that at each chassis for each individual motorhome that it rides on. Yeah, I know it's, it's a big deal because, you know, the different brands that we have mm -hmm. are different shapes and sizes. The floor plans have a tendency to move the weights around mm -hmm. up above. And so what's really neat about what we do is because we have the engineering investment, uh, we're able to create a foundation specific mm -hmm. to every single floor plan. And so what that does is it helps to balance what the house is on top of the chassis and and the better it balances on those airbags you know the better the coach is going to ride down the road and and i believe we do the best job in the industry of that and you know i challenge people all the time to compare the difference mm -hmm. because if you drive one of ours even on another freightliner from another brand mm -hmm. and you drive a thor motor coach you're going to instantly think, you know what, wow, that Atlas really makes a huge, huge difference for me. And I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you who agrees with that is Jerry, who just commented. Jerry wrote, these are the best motorhomes on the market today, in my opinion. Thank you very much, Jerry. We appreciate yeah, that. Appreciate we do. That. We put the, the time and the effort, and uh, especially when it comes to the Palazzo. Uh, let's walk through this 37.4, and we can start with some of the features on the outside. Uh, this is the newest floor plan in the Palazzo line. So let's kind of talk about... Um, when you were helping put this together and designing uh, the layout and the materials and the powertrain and all that, what was your thought on these features are exactly what the 37.4 needs? So I guess the initial mm -hmm. thought behind this when Matt Grubauer, our, our mm -hmm. lead engineer and actually he's now our product manager, uh, put this together, we really wanted to create a full-timer type of unit mm -hmm. because not to say you couldn't full-time in the smaller ones because I know we have a lot of folks right. that do, but this coach almost has overlapping slides because it has the two slides on the on the uh, road side, mm -hmm. but then it also has this nice, large, almost full wall side that opposes both the front and the mm -hmm. rear. So when you walk inside of it, it just feels like home. It doesn't feel real, you know, cramped mm -hmm. inside. Um, we were able to put a really big galley in it, which was a huge deal, the biggest galley we've ever done in a Palazzo. It's got a king bed, which I know a lot of the folks mm -hmm. out there are, are really interested in. It has um, opposing seating in it, which this is the first. When I say opposing seating, I don't mean the dinette across from the sofa. Okay. This literally has two separate seating locations that are across from one another, and so it has these nice theater seats, mm -hmm. so you can, you can sit down and relax, put your feet up, and then there's a nice uh, retractable television behind the other sofa location. So, you know, it really creates a really nice congregation yeah. of space up front. And, and um, like I said, it's just, it's got so much room in it that, you know, I don't think you really need much more room to be happy. Oh, and we'll take you in in just a second. Let's talk about some of the bells and whistles people are going to find on the outside. I mean, besides, you know, uh, we, let's start, we got entertainment, we got storage, we got connections. I mean, we got everything. Yeah, we awnings, got dual so, awnings. Yeah. You know? So, you know, one of the other things, obviously, with recreational vehicle living is, you know, people spend a, a tremendous amount of time outside the unit. And so, you know, we didn't want to sacrifice on that. And we had so much surface area, you know, on the patio side that we said, you know, why not put a couple patio awnings on? So we actually have one up front here, mm -hmm. uh, which will also act as a window awning for you okay. in, in the front area of the coach because it comes down and covers that up. And then you have another nice patio awning that runs down the other side. Um, we got a nice TV out front here as well. Uh, a ton of storage. Steve. You know, by going, and this is the longest palazzo that we've ever done, um, there's just a lot of, of space inside uh, to utilize in the basement, um, mm -hmm. you know, for those long trips yeah. that you're going to go on. And as we walk in, one thing I want to point out, uh, I heard somebody say as they are walking in, um, the way that the, the step height, because there are certain manufacturers, they were they were talking, and, and I'm not going to name names, they didn't have the step, and it was a big step up, and uh, it was a big reach for uh, the lady trying to get in. She says, it's it, and it's the little details like that that really set not only the plaza, but Thor Motor Coach, apart from doing these little things to fit everybody's lifestyle. There is, and, and you know, it's funny, the, the reason why it's this way is we actually designed this coach as a lower profile unit because mm -hmm. we wanted to maximize fuel economy, and that's one thing I didn't even mention. Um, these palazzos are getting upwards of 11 miles of the gallon. That's awesome for a diesel, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and gas coaches, you know, it's, it's generally around seven or eight, so um, I think 
delivering to California, we're up in the, the 14 and a half miles of the gallon mm -hmm. range on, on some of the smaller ones. So just a, a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of, of economy there. I know you don't buy a motorhome for fuel economy, <laughs> but you know, hey. What, well, it, is, you know, it is, you know, it is something to take in consideration, especially if there are people who are doing this full time and they're retired and they have a fixed income coming in every month. That's a huge consideration. So the miles uh, to the gallon is great. And as I, as I look up, I can see we got uh, the, the cameras in the mirror, which are uh, fantastic for when you're, when you're turning. Uh, everything you need uh, on the outside is here and on the inside, but we got a lot to, uh, we got a lot of folks to navigate around. I think they're gonna like the tour here. But yeah. let's point out, uh, before we step in, uh, you can see we got, we've even put a little mudroom in here. Yeah, so you know, if, if it's, it's a little muddy outside, you can, mm -hmm. you can toss the shoes or gloves in there and you don't have to worry about, about messing anything up. All right, so, oh no, come on out. Come on out, Come on out. Yeah, just come, you'll be good. Come on out. There you go. How are you? How are you today? How are you? Thanks for coming nice out. To see you. Thanks for coming out. All right. And we will, you, my we will go on in. Folks, how are you doing bonjour, today? Bonjour, oh. bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> we, have, we have a little bit of an got, international yeah, yeah. influence. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're broadcasting uh, live right now. And you, can, you know what? Listen, you can stay. Uh, Adam's going to walk us through. If you, ha you can just stay and listen. We won't show you. Uh, we're going to get all the details. So, all right. Stop on back if you have any questions, okay? All right. I, I can clear a room out fast. What, what, is, it, what, what is it about me? Is it, I, I showered this morning, ma'am. I really did. All right. So here we are inside, and we were talking about, uh, we were talking about room. So let's go ahead and start with uh, the way that you laid this out, from the opposing seating to the, 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 the dash layout. I mean, there are so many bells and whistles in here. So it's a huge living room. It's massive. Yeah, and like I was saying, you know, with these theater seats, I mean, they're really comfortable. Um, you know, they, you can, you can prop your feet up so I can sit down here and, and these pop up so you can, you can get nice and relaxed. And then you got this huge TV and what's great, Steve, is if you don't want to watch television, mm -hmm. you can drop that right down. Um, also these cab chairs flip around and you'll notice there's a midship television as well. Yep. And, um, and so that'll allow, so, if, you know, obviously you have guests over and they're mm -hmm. sitting at the sofa, you, you wouldn't have this TV up and you have the nice window. Right. And the TV right here, we got uh, the remote units for our multiplex wiring system, which we'll talk about. And now I do want to talk about, you know, you just mentioned the fireplace and you mentioned the midship TV. When the Palazzo first came out, when we talked about it at Open House uh, last September, uh, this is, in, in, just to address the, the folks that they're watching, is how important their input is. Because they said, you know what, that would be a great area for a fireplace, and look what you guys did. You know, we, we get a lot of input. I mean, my girlfriend, believe it or not, yeah. she's a huge fireplace yeah. uh, fan, so uh, she's always saying that she wants one in every room of the house. But, um, yeah, it's nice. We, we mm -hmm. put a fireplace uh, in. We put some overheads in. It, it really finished off. Uh, the middle part of the of this unit really nicely mm -hmm. and and it just it just yeah. looks so res residential in here and that's and area. that's why Jennifer commented right now very nice interior thank you very much Jennifer thanks uh, thanks for watching and tuning in uh, to us today so we got uh, we got the TV we got uh, the sound bar we got the blu-ray player uh, we got the large dinette we got uh, every that's the great thing I like about this 37 4 is usually people have to pick and choose well do I want the dinette or do I want the theater seats or do I want the sofa this has them all, which I think is yes. just a great design. I couldn't believe we were able to do it at the length. I mean, yeah. we still kept it under 39 feet long, and and uh, again, I, like, you're really not missing anything. I mean, right. look at this galley, Steve. This I mean, is this is this is, is the largest kitchen that we've ever massive, put in Palazzo. See, I listen far, to what you say. Far. I mean, it's it's incredible. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm a huge fan of these bay windows. Um, especially when we have to place a galley on the curbside because we don't want to close this area off right. from the outside environment. So um, we, we put in the big windows in. I mean, look at all this cabinet store. It's just amazing. And, and these cabinets, mm -hmm. these are the same cabinets we put in a, you know, $450,000 yeah. Tuscany. Right. So, so you can see, and one of the quality. things, just how deep they are too, yes. right? You know, because you have larger items that you want to carry with you. I mean, and you can see we got the, uh, we got the countertop that just... Does and it just keeps going that. and going, and most of these coaches, again in this segment, mm -hmm. you don't even have enough room to put a, a cutting board down. You literally have to put the covers on the sink or the stovetop to be able to do it. And it. I'll tell you how big they are. Not to cut you off, you're talking about that stuff. When when we're doing uh, our videos, we we can we we can put a coffee maker on here or our stand mixer, and that is stuff that people like to take out in full time, and you can fit it in this kitchen. And those are solid surface countertops, it is. too. This is, uh, I think this is LG, but yeah, we use all solid surface in here. 
Um, you know, when looking at the cabinets, uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention yeah. was your fascias, all your surrounding um, base frames. This is all real hardwood. Um, a majority of our competitors are just using a, what we call MDF. It's like a press board, okay. and, they, and they wrap it in vinyl. Um, we spend you know, upwards of four or $5,000 a unit mm -hmm. um, on the cabinets to make them look this way. And what's really great about cabinetry is that as it matures, mm -hmm. it, it kind of changes a little bit. Yeah. Um, it gives it kind of more of a regal look. And uh, everything's going to change the same. When you have vinyl going with hardwood, then everything mismatches, right. and then you, you think, oh, my gosh, I, I, I'm not really happy with the way my motorhome looks anymore. So um, it, it makes a huge difference. I mean, even, like, the, mm -hmm. the main, um, you know, walls, like you can see right above right. this uh, this backsplash right here uh, next to the microwave, that's all uh, real mm -hmm. veneer. That's, that's that's maple veneer in here. And this is a brand-new color for us. This is called Newport. We, uh, we took the red out of the resort and, and went to this Newport cabinetry color, and it's been a it's been a resounding success. It's for beautiful us. in here. As somebody commented on the interiors, and the other thing I think that's important to point out too, Adam, about the cabinet work is that this is all Amish handcrafted. This isn't something that where, you know, you put it into just you know a three D printer and it just shoots them out. Psh, 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 psh. I mean, this this is this is everything in here is handmade. Yeah, it is. I mean, the glazing. So they put some accent work mm -hmm. to really accentuate the, uh, the the raised panels, and that's all hand done by yeah. the, by the Amish. We. Uh, we have a company out of Napanee mm -hmm. that does just a phenomenal job for us. It's it's, it's lucky we're lucky in the RV business yeah. because in that area you have Sawyers with you know three generations yeah. worth of, of history. Who know their craft? Yeah, and Absolutely. it's neat to watch the 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 the, the tour over there. It's really kind of neat. To, it's it just really a neat, neat process to see. So as we as we walk on through here, uh, somebody asked and commented about. Uh, the, the multiplex system, which we'll get to in just a second, but sure. the little details uh, in here. One of the things I like is we have we have the pantry mm -hmm. over here, and it's just you even have little, even little some more pantry. More room. pantry. You have uh, you have coat hooks. Yeah, we have the, the pull out pantry over here. So we got a couple of pantries for you, and these yeah. shelves are, are are nice and large. You can fit the big condiment bottles and the ketchup bottles. We got the uh, residential appliances in here. We do. And uh, let's talk about the. Multiplex wiring system. Somebody wants to know about it, so let's take them through this. So, what you'll notice mm -hmm. is that we're using the seven-inch screen now. Right. Um, this used to only be reserved mm -hmm. for the Tuscany, and then it made it into mm -hmm. the Venetian. Um, we decided, you know what? This is such a fantastic system. Why not putting it all the diesel yeah. brands? So, what multiplexing basically is, in, in a nutshell, is what we're using is computer modules to communicate. So, when you can pull one of these remotes off the wall, so yeah, absolutely. Like you can see right here. You know, these just pop right off, yep. and and what happens is, is that they're just communicating frequencies. So in the in the old days, I say the old days, yeah. a few years ago, yeah. we would have to run a wire for every single function on on the unit. Well, you can imagine with human beings right. assembling these yeah. motorhomes. I mean, if any connection's bad, then it can cause a yep. huge problem. Well, now we don't ever have to worry about that. In fact, I think we. The engineer said uh, it was like 11 to 12 pounds of wiring. Oh wow! Was removed from the coaches. So it's kind of like playing the lottery. Yeah. You know, the, the more problem, problems you could possibly have, the more wires. So by by simplifying everything, mm -hmm. it really makes a difference, and it's easily more easily troubleshot. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you have problems, you know, with, yeah. with with the computers and everything else, it makes a huge difference. And then also there's a Bluetooth uh, feature mm -hmm. with this, so you can literally go in yeah. with your phone. So you don't even need to go to this main center uh, to be able to control everything. So. There it um, is. It's a, it's a, it's got a really, too many really pockets. Cool yeah, I actually have that here, and that would be right here. I don't have it hooked up to this, but it is the uh, the Vega Touch mirror. If you go into your settings button here and you go to the mobile app, you can see Vega Touch. You download the app, you type in your codes, and then everything is mirrored on your phone. And if you have one of these systems right now and you're thinking, I don't know every single bell and whistle, check out our YouTube channel. We have a complete walkthrough video on that. Now, the one thing I do want to uh, ask, we had a question here about solar power. So let's talk about what Thor Motor Coach is doing with solar charging now, because uh, we do that on uh, all of our diesels. And I know across the line, either they come with solar panels or they are equipped, they are solar prep, where you just put your panel on, plug it in and go. So let's talk about what uh, Thor has done with uh, solar, especially in this uh, 37.4. So I'm, I'm a big advocate of doing things better for the environment, mm -hmm. but plus also just the self-sustainability of motorhomes is right. important to me. And you know, we have a lot of people that are adventurous, they want to go mm -hmm. off the beaten path, and so they want to be able to extend their battery right. life. Well, we were... I'm, you know, I'm big into these industry firsts, yeah. right? I like to be the first to, to, to jump on stuff. Well, we were the first to do pre-wiring. Uh, for 2018, 
we were the first to do solar across the board and standard and our mm -hmm. diesel pusher. So there's a 100-watt solar panel that's standard equipment on this coach. And the way that it's set up with the controller, which is down in the bay, okay. you can act, actually add two more panels to the system okay. very easily. You can just wire them in series. So um, you know anybody that really is big into it or you know if you mm -hmm. live in the southern climates, I mean, the sun you know today mm -hmm. is... It's beautiful, but it, and it's not a trickle charge. I, I want everybody to take that trickle charge word out of their or vocabulary. I mean, it's an efficient charge that will really sustain uh, for a long period of time, and, and it makes a huge difference. And uh, someone's asking, with a solar charger, can you run your fridge with the solar charging? You can, yeah. So, so the refrigerator, the microwave, um, most of the outlets in this unit, um, they're all set up on the inverter. So, okay. yeah, I mean, we, we do it that way, absolutely, because, you know, there's a lot of people, I'm from Eugene, Oregon originally, mm -hmm. and I, I grew up without air conditioning. So, <laughs> I mean, a lot of times yeah. you can go places in these motorhomes mm -hmm. where you don't need the air conditioning. So, you know, why mm -hmm. run the generator? There's mm -hmm. no real need. And so, I mean, you should run your generator from time to time just sure. to make sure that it's, it's, it's running properly. But um, I think they require mm -hmm. a certain amount of time. But, yeah, I know it. It's, it's a major, major factor, a major advantage on our Palazzo. Well, let's uh, finish our bedroom uh, tour here. We got a uh, king size tilt of your bed. I'm yep. stuck on the door yep. handle there. So, yeah, and you can see that, you know, this, this will raise up the mm -hmm. wall. So, um, these are really, this is a great feature. Yeah, a lot of people like mm -hmm. to watch TV in bed. And you can see, see, we, we raise the TV up nice and high. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're not going to have to be looking over your feet to do it. You got the big stack of a washer dryer back here as well. Um, I know that that's important to a lot of people. We, we only have one. Plaza floor plan um, in our 33.3 mm -hmm. that doesn't have a stackable, and we're even working on on, on something with that. Mm -hmm. So you know we we're big into that because again you know this is a full timer unit right. or it's you know somebody that wants to go out for a long period of time if they're not full timing. And that's why we've made the closets as dark as we have. I mean this is just uh, I mean this is a full wall closet back here. 96 mm -hmm. inches across. You don't get that anywhere else. And then there's even a little extra. Oh, a lot in here as well. Of the uh, of the stackable. And I'll say look even. Even back here, I mean, even behind the TV, we have a little storage for you. So you need to put your little DVDs back there. We got uh, nice uh, counters back here. Again, the big, deep drawers back here. Um, let's talk about as we uh, work our way back up front. Question about uh, air conditioners. Uh -huh. How big are they? They are. So we have two uh, two two air conditioners mm -hmm. on board. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's it's, it's really going to cool the unit really really, really well. well. Keep them nice and cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that because then they're easy to control with the multiplex wiring system. You know what? We got to go to the bathroom. If we don't show the they're bathroom, they're both thirteen point five okay. BTU as well. I, I mentioned that because there are some companies out there that run eleven oh, uh, BTU okay. air conditioners, and they both are. Uh, yeah. And then the, the window in the bathroom. Yeah. Again, another thing that you don't see. You know, windows and kitchens and windows and bathrooms are, mm -hmm. are just one of my pet peeves because. I mean, who doesn't want a window in the bathroom? Right. I mean, there's there's plenty of advantages to that. And, you know, the way we set up our heating, you can see there's actually a separate um, duct for, for the furnace in there as well because, you know, it seems like that's always the place that gets the coldest when you need it the most. And, and, and we really pride ourselves in paying attention to the small details like that. Yep, we got nice, uh, we got a nice sliding door in there. We had to show the bathroom because we didn't. I know we would hear about it, folks. <laughs> we we want to show you the bathroom. And the, the skylights that uh, you guys have decided to put in there uh, really make a massive difference. One, not only the amount of natural light, but in height. Yes, yes, because they do set up a little bit higher. I'm six foot two, so you know I, it definitely means a lot to me. I don't have to scrunch down to be comfortable. Uh, we also uh, increased the size of the sink in the in the in the bathrooms. We had a, we had some feedback from a customer that they just weren't satisfied with the size, so we we went to work and found something for them. <laughs> funny funny question from uh, Tavares: Self driving? No, that would take the fun. That would take all the fun. Part of owning a, a diesel motorhome or any motorhome or that. And for me, and I know you go out uh, many many times as well. I, just the drive yeah. itself, because that's the one thing I love about uh, motorhomes is. You know, and, and you got to find out what fits you. And, and I find, you know, with, with uh, travel trailers and fifth wheels, vacation starts when you set up camp. In a motorhome, vacation starts as soon as you turn that key. Yeah. I mean, because it is, a, it's, you know, depending on how your family is. I mean, when I go out, and I'm sure your son's the same way with my girls, you start that key and hit the road, and, man, they are just jazzed to go wherever, it's right? the most fun part of the whole trip, yeah. to be honest. And, and, again, with diesel being quieter, 
Um, you know, we, we actually, and I, I know I talk about this a lot, but we design these floor plans uh, to where when the slides are closed, they're still 100% usable. Yep. And not everybody does that, right. folks. I mean, there's a lot of people that, you know, they, put, they press the sofas mm -hmm. together, you're climbing over things, you can't open the refrigerator door because, you, you know, you want to get a sandwich, um, you know, while you're in transit. These are all things that are a luxury in being in an RV, yeah. and, and we make that happen with the way we design them. Yeah, you can, use, uh, you can use the restroom while you're on the road, which I know is important. I travel with, uh, with three girls, so makes for a lot of restroom stops. Yes. So being able to do that is huge. So this is the Palazzo 37.4, the newest floor plan. Uh, we answered a lot of questions out there. And uh, boy, I should I should have brought my readers. I just got readers, and I'm just not used to them, Adam. I don't I don't want to admit I'm there yet. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I'm going like this to read uh, to read the questions. But uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, oh, somebody said, uh, what about long distance? This is perfect for long distance. This has a uh, fuel tank. On on this yeah it's uh i want to say hey, it's 90 gallons yeah so you can get to and if you're getting you know driving it uh smoothly at you know 11 uh, miles per gallon you're getting you got a range on this. yeah and it's, a, it's a huge it's a great point because you know with the gas coaches it's typically 75 so you're adding 15 gallons and you're adding this fuel economy so yeah your range is going to be a lot more and so uh, less stops uh, means you're going to get there quicker uh someone's asking about uh fresh water tank the fresh water tank on this, believe it or not, is the largest that we have in our whole lineup. It's 95 gallons. That's when a the, lot. When of the fresh. plaza originally uh, came out back in 2012, we we made the mistake of only putting a 50 gallon tank. So uh, to make up for it, we made it the biggest tank we have in our lineup. Nice. And uh, someone's asking, with uh, with a with a bed lie flat with the slides in, and it will. You can put that bed completely down with the slides in. I've been in here with okay. it and, and right. driven it like that. So yes, uh, yep, you, uh, you you can. Um, so. Uh, Boy, I'll tell you what, this has uh, been a great walkthrough. we got a lot of people in here who have a lot of questions. we got to wrap this up. So, so and I think your Steve, phone's ringing. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate I appreciate it, it very much. Uh, we're going to be out here. We have to recharge a couple of batteries. We're going to go grab some lunch, and then we will be back with you soon. we got a lot more to show you. Thanks for the comments coming in.